Koh Tao is a small island located in the Gulf of Thailand, approximately 70 kilometres east of the mainland city of Chumpon. The island has an area of about 21 kilometres square and is known for its beautiful beaches, clear waters and popular diving spots. As a popular tourist destination, the island has a relatively small permanent population of around 2,000 people, mostly made up of local Thais and migrant workers from other parts of Thailand and neighbouring countries such as Myanmar and Cambodia. In terms of law enforcement, Koh Tao has a small police force that is responsible for maintaining public order and investigating crimes on the island. The police station in Koh Tao is now staffed by a few dozen officers, including both Thai nationals and foreign volunteers who assist with translation and other tasks. However, in 2014 that figure was much less and it only had around five police officers for the whole island. Despite its small size and relatively low crime rate, the island has been the scene of several high-profile crimes in recent years. The bodies of Hannah Witheridge and David Miller were discovered in the early hours of September 15th, 2014 on Seri Beach, a popular tourist destination on the island of Koh Tao in Thailand. The incident occurred just a few hours after the two had been seen partying on the beach with a group of fellow travellers. The discovery was made by a group of local fishermen who reported seeing a blood-stained body on the beach. Police were immediately called to the scene and upon arrival they discovered the second victim just a short distance away. The bodies were found approximately 30 metres apart. Both victims were found partially clothed, with Hannah Witheridge's body lying face down on the sand and David Miller's body partially submerged in the surf. Both victims had been hit several times on the head, Witheridge had been raped and Miller had been drowned. The discovery of the bodies of the two young backpackers on a popular Thai island sent shock waves across the world and led to a massive investigation by Thai authorities. The case was a major test for the Thai justice system and was closely followed by the international community. Just a quick note, if you enjoy my content and you're interested in true crime, then why not consider liking and subscribing to the channel, where I post new videos every week. Anyway, back to the case. A tropical beach and now a crime scene. Police reinforcements were rushed to this normally peaceful island to help investigate what appears to be a brutal double murder. The bodies of the two young British tourists were found here early this morning. At first, islanders tried to block people from leaving in the hope of finding the perpetrator. But the police say they're looking to question a tourist they believe left this morning. The two victims have both been identified as David Miller, who was 24, from Jersey, and Hannah Witheridge, 23, from Hemsby in Norfolk. They're both thought to have arrived on the island last month. Hannah Witheridge and David Miller were both young, ambitious students who had set out on a backpacking adventure in Southeast Asia. Witheridge, aged 23, was from Hemsby in England and had a background in education and speech therapy. She had completed an undergraduate degree in education at the University of East Anglia and was pursuing postgraduate studies in speech and language therapy at the University of Essex. Miller, aged 24, was from Jersey a Crown Dependency and had just completed his undergraduate degree in Civil and Structural Engineering at the University of Leeds. He had recently completed a six-week work placement with a mining company in Australia before arriving in Thailand in August to travel and explore the region with two friends. Both Witheridge and Miller arrived on the island of Koh Tao separately on August 25, 2014. Witheridge was travelling with three other friends while Miller was with two others. It was on the island that the two met while staying at the same hotel. Tragically, their trip came to a violent and untimely end when they were murdered on the beach in the early hours of September 15, 2014. David Miller and Hannah Witheridge had been enjoying a night out with friends at the AC Bar on Sunday, September 14, 2014, where around 50 people, mostly foreign tourists, were gathered for a party. They left the bar together after 1am and were last seen walking towards Sari Beach, where they were staying at the Ocean View bungalows. It was just a few hours later, between 4 and 5 a.m., when local fishermen discovered their bodies. Miller's body was found floating in the water, while Witheridge's body was found on a beach, a short distance from Miller's body and 30 metres from their hotel. The bodies were semi-naked and showed clear signs of violence. A bloody hoe and a wooden club, believed to be the murder weapons, were found near the bodies, along with three cigarette butts and a used condom. A pile of clothes was also found nearby. The police immediately secured the crime scene, and moved the bodies to prevent them from being swept away by the rising tide. Local residents blocked the pier to prevent the perpetrators from leaving the island. 
An autopsy conducted on the bodies revealed that both victims had been hit by a hard object, resulting in head and face wounds. Miller had scratches on his back and water on his lungs, indicating that he had drowned. In contrast, Witheridge's body showed signs of sexual assault, including tearing at the vulva, bruising on the perineum, and a bite mark on her right nipple. DNA samples were collected from these areas and sent to a police forensic lab for analysis. However, and incredibly, the close family of the bodies were not tested for DNA. The investigation at Koh Tao in Thailand caused concern that it would affect foreign tourism in the country. Due to this, the national authorities expedited the investigation into the murders, which put pressure on the police to produce quick results. Unfortunately, this affected how they conducted their investigation, with the police initially speculating about the culprit without any clear evidence. The police focused on foreign nationals, with a spokesperson claiming that ties wouldn't do this. Some migrants who were questioned complained that the officers scolded them with boiling water during the interrogations. After initially failing to find a match to one of the migrant workers, the police shifted their attention to the Western tourists related to the victims. They highlighted a British tourist who had shared a room with one of the victims as a suspect, but quickly dropped the lead. Several other suspects were also named, with a new one every other day amid pressure to produce results. Thai police have released CCTV footage of a man they describe as the prime suspect in the murder of two young British tourists on the popular island resort of Koh Tao. This short moment caught on camera appears to show an Asian man running down an empty street at 3.44am. Around an hour later, the man reappeared at a much slower pace. Detectives are now questioning three migrant workers from Burma over the killing of 24-year-old David Miller and 23-year-old Hannah Witheridge, who were both discovered semi-naked on a beach yesterday, having suffered serious injuries. The prosecution in the subsequent trial claimed that CCTV footage showed three individuals riding a motorcycle to 7-Eleven, where they bought beer and cigarettes before heading towards Sari Beach. Footage near the crime scene also showed one of the three men running into a shortcut. One of the men, Mao Mao, resided nearby. Two weeks after the bodies were found, the police interrogated Mao Mao, who said he took the motorcycle and separated from the other two men before the murders had occurred, and found them both the home asleep by the time he had returned. Police entered the home the next day, and only one of the men, Zhao Lin, was present. Following an interrogation during which police say Zhao Lin admitted he had entered the country illegally, Zhao Lin was arrested, and his clothes and motorcycle were seized as evidence. The second man, Wao Pio, was believed to have left the island by boat the previous night. He was found hiding on the boat later on the 2nd of October. Both men were 22-year-old migrant workers from Rakhine, Myanmar, who worked in the hospitality industry. They had no prior criminal records. During an hours long interrogation, which the police used Burmese food vendors as interpreters because the pair could not speak Thai, the suspects confessed to the murders. They stated they were driven by a desire to rape the victim following sexual arousal when they saw the couple kissing on the beach. The police said the suspect's DNA matched a sample of semen taken from one of the victim's bodies and to the hoe and cigarette butts found near the body. Early police reports said the other victim's mobile phone was also found in Zorlin's home, although the media had previously reported the phone was handed to police by a friend of the victim. In the trial, the prosecution said the phone was found smashed at the home of a friend of Zorlin's. The police then forced the suspects to reenact the murder in front of the media, which was criticised by legal experts as prejudicing a fair hearing. Zhao Lin and Wai Pao retracted their statements following a visit from a consular lawyer from Myanmar and said they had made the statements under duress after they had allegedly been beaten, left naked in a freezing room and threatened with electrocution and an extrajudicial killing. The National Police Chief denied that torture was involved in the confessions Thailand's National Human Rights Commission attempted to investigate the allegations, but police representatives did not appear at the full scheduled meetings. It's also worth noting that a defence team from Bangkok composed of nearly 20 lawyers was only permitted half an hour to meet the men, not leaving them nearly enough legal guidance to help defend their case. The trial of Saul Lin and Wai Pao began in July 2015 and lasted more than two years with 64 witnesses called to testify. The prosecution argued that the defendants had raped and killed the two tourists and presented DNA evidence and confessions obtained during police interrogation as proof of their guilt. However, the defence argued that the confessions were coerced and the evidence was unreliable. 
In December 2015, the defence filed a complaint alleging that the prosecutions had failed to disclose important evidence, including CCTV footage that could have exonerated the defendants. The court later found that the prosecution had withheld evidence and ordered a retrial which began in 2017. During the retrial, the defence argued that the confessions were obtained through torture and coercion and presented evidence of police misconduct, including mishandling of DNA samples and inconsistencies in the prosecution's case. In March 2019, the court rejected the defence's arguments and upheld the original verdict, sentencing Zor Lin and Wei Pai o to death. The verdict was met with criticism from human rights groups and the International Committee, who called for a fair trial and an end to the use of the death penalty in Thailand. The case has also raised concerns about police misconduct and the treatment of migrant workers in Thailand. In March 2021, Thailand's king granted a royal pardon to Zor Lin and Wai Pao, commuting their death sentences to life imprisonment. The pardon was granted as part of a traditional Songkran holiday amnesty, which is typically used to reduce prison overcrowding. However, the men have maintained their innocence and continued to seek justice. The Koh Tao murders sparked outrage in Thailand and around the world. Many people expressed sympathy for the families of the victims and concerns for the safety of tourists in Thailand. The police handling of the case was widely criticised, with allegations of forced confessions and mistreatment of, of suspects. Human rights groups, including Amnesty International, called for an independent investigation into the allegations of torture and mistreatment of the suspects. The trial and conviction of the two migrant workers were also controversial. Some people, including the families of the victims, believed that justice had been served, while others, including human rights advocates and the defence team, criticised the prosecution's case and the handling of the trial. The defence team argued that the evidence against the suspects were weak and circumstantial at best, and that the prosecution had relied heavily on the confessions obtained under duress. Some people also criticised the court's handling of the case, including its refusal to allow the defence team more time to prepare and its acceptance of the retracted confessions as evidence. The mayor of the island, Chai Antarasukul, announced a new police station and staffed it with 40 full-time officers, compared to the five that they had previously. The way the police handled the crime scene in the aftermath of the murders of Hannah Withridge and David Miller was widely criticised by both local and international observers. One of the most significant criticisms was the apparent lack of security and preservation of the crime scene. Photographs emerged in the media showing police officers and members of the public handling and moving items within the crime scene, potentially contaminating important evidence. In addition, it was reported that the police officers allowed tourists to take photographs and videos at the crime scene, raising concerns about privacy and the dignity of the victims. There were also reports that the police had mishandled evidence and failed to properly secure the area around the crime scene. For example, a bloodstained garden hoe, which was believed to be the murder weapon, was found approximately 35 metres from the crime scene in a nearby pond. The delay in finding this crucial piece of evidence raised questions about the thoroughness of the initial investigation. Furthermore, there were reports of poor communication and coordination between different police officers and departments and local authorities involved in the investigation. For example, it was reported that the local police had initially ruled out the possibility of sexual assault on Hannah Witheridge, but this was contradicted by the autopsy report. Overall, the handling of the crime scene by the police was widely criticised for its lack of professionalism, competence and attention to detail. I'm going to leave you now with a statement from David Miller's family following the convictions of Zor Lin and Wai Bao. Let me know what you think in the comments. Do you think they have the right suspects? Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I look forward to posting more true crime soon. Have a great day. David always stood up for justice and justice is what has been delivered today. We respect this court and its decision completely. Having listened carefully to all the evidence and despite what their lawyers say, it is our opinion that the evidence against Weipo and Zorlin is absolutely overwhelming. They raped to satisfy their selfish desires and murdered to cover up that fact. They have shown no remorse during the trial. Initially, they confessed for almost two weeks and then recanted in an attempt to avoid justice. 
We hope the campaigners who have relentlessly publicized this case will respect the process of law and the decision of the court. We believe the correct verdict has been reached. We, we disagree with the verdict uh, and the lawyers will be preparing a, an immediate appeal. Uh, the defendants have said today uh, that whatever the decision, they, they accept the decision, but they believe very strongly that one day uh, the truth on this case will, will come out and they're confident that during the appeal process they will be acquitted.